brawls aren't even the worst part of my job. Sure, you may take a beating, but at least you get the chance to defend yourself. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up, your back and neck feel stiff, your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. People were finally leaving the place. The bar was about to close. And I hadn't seen Mitchell go in or out. I had no choice. I see you took me up on my invitation. And you're smart. You knew not to come until my anti-fur regulars had all cleared out. I can't say no to good advice. Or good bourbon. Here's looking at you, Mr. Uh, what was your name? As far as I knew, La Iguana always stayed neutral. He played poker with Cassidy, but his joint was used as a gambling drop-off for O'Leary's operation. Did it make sense to keep faking it? Or was it too dangerous not to? Farnham. Howard M. Farnham II. That's right. Howard Farnham from Ding Dong Day. You're natural. That sure beats your poker game. Ah, uh, this here's much easier. No cheating. <laughs> you barely flinched when Cassidy decided to teach that ego a lesson. What do you want a fella to say? Between you and me, partner, this ain't my first showdown. <laughs> we all got our own lethal barber. <laughs> Damn it. Well, nobody's perfect. Tell me, what do you really want with Cassidy? I can't say it's clear to me. I'm looking to start a boxing manager's association in Texas. I could really use Cassidy's know-how. Don't worry about it. I was only curious. So, what about me? What do you want from me? No one comes to La Iguana just to drink and play pool. I'm here looking for a regular of yours. Dr. Angus Mitchell. What for? I know he's got his own sport business, and I think a partnership would be profitable for the both of us. Sure. Tell you what, I'll talk to Mitchell. Come back tomorrow night. You don't understand. I have to talk to him or else. Or else what? I don't think Cassidy would be too happy about the role this here dump plays in old Leary's gambling operation. You follow me? Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Give me your phone number, and I'll give you a call when Mitchell shows up. No. You're gonna call him right now, and you're gonna give him this message. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. It's so bad that your thoughts spiral in a never-ending loop. Like when you're stuck in your car, 
on surveillance duty. The owner of La Iguana was supposed to tell Mitchell that a certain anteater was still alive and that it was only a matter of time before he ratted him out. With a bit of luck, that would make him nervous enough to force his hand. Now all I had to do was follow him. He went in without it. I wonder what's in it. We'll be just fine, don't worry. Gil, stand guard right here. If the cat shows up, you know what to do. I'll be back in an hour. Could I take him by surprise from over there? Although I don't know how I'd get there.
Hmm, what does this place have to hide? Will I need help? Who would I call? Pier 36, the 6th sea-facing warehouse coming in from Montgomery. John? Is that you? Meet me in an hour. What's going on? Bring your camera. I just gave you the scoop of your life. Pier 36. Meet me in an hour. Like that. If you're coming from Montgomery, it's the 6th sea-facing warehouse. What's going on? And bring the cavalry. It could be an Ojibwa totem pole, in which case, the top animal would be a crane. If I'm not mistaken, these are incense sticks, used in cleansing rituals. A dream catcher. It's supposed to protect children during the night, trapping all evil in its spider web. Don't you even <laughs> think of screaming? I might not even talk. It looks like an arrowhead.
Everything seems to prove that Gil is a Native American, and I'm almost sure that the woman in the picture is his mother. You know who'll always believe in you? Your mother. My mother never lost her faith in me. And I gave her plenty of reasons when I was a kid. I was a terrible student. I flunked absolutely everything. Somehow my mother managed to keep me in school until I got into college. But I never gave her reasons to believe in me then either. I made new friends. The type of friends that convince you to do things that wouldn't make a mother proud. Then Pearl Harbor happened. I got drafted and sent to Europe. They told me killing was my moral duty, but I discovered it could be addictive. Not all victims were Nazis. But when I got back, I was treated like a pariah, a veteran outcast who never should have come back in the first place. And yet, my mother never ceased to... I also fought in the war. That's where I met Mitchell. They used me, like many of my people. And then they just tossed us aside. The first time Mitchell offered me to do this, I told him to take a hike. I wanted to get my act together, but I ended up begging him. I don't like Mitchell. I don't like the things he makes me do. I don't like that German rat either, but what I like least of all is myself. I don't like what I did during the war, and I don't like what I'm doing now. Do you know what it's like to kill a friend for the sake of the mission? Huh. But my mother, she always thought I'd make amends and start anew. Maybe it's time I did just that. It's number three.